Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we take a look at the tragic fate of three characters from the game whose stories all interlink. These characters are Susie Campbell, Alison Pendle, and Thomas Connor. In this video, we are going to delve into the backstory of each of these characters, explain how they are connected, and what their fate was at the hands of the nefarious Joey Drew. We will also look at how I believe their events unfolded on the story's timeline. Chapter 5 indeed gave us a mountain of new information and exciting plot revelations, so let's dive in and begin this theory with a look at the fate of Susie Campbell and her connection to both Joey Drew and Alison Pendle. Susie Campbell was a young starlet with big dreams for her future career in the voiceover business. She made a true connection with a character she voiced for the first time while working at Joey Drew Studios. This character was Alice Angel. This is the first character I really felt a connection with, but she's a part of me. It seems as though Joey Drew noticed Susie's dedication to her new role and decided to nurture her love for Alice, but at the same time began to plant the idea in her head that the studio wasn't doing so well financially. Of course, charming her along the way. Who would have thought? Me, having lunch with Joey Drew. Apparently times are tougher than I thought. Why would Joey wish to confide confidential information about the possible closure of his animation studio with a voice actress such as Susie casually over lunch? It seems like upper management level stuff and not what you would want to share with the talent. Well, at this point in the story, we must consider the possibility Joey was in the test phase of his ink machine research. This research had the end goal of creating living cartoon characters. And we know how Joey wanted Susie to be the first living test subject after the original experiment to create a living version of Bendy was a failure. Why was Bendy's creation so flawed? Well, probably because he had no soul within him. He was created via a template of his cartoon avatar run through the ink machine, but had no personality or character, if you will, because he was a hollow vessel. We hear Thomas Connor commenting on this in Chapter 5. So Joey had a motive and a rather cruel plan in place for Susie right from the moment he found out how much her on-screen character, Alice Angel, truly meant to her. This means it is highly likely Susie wasn't replaced by Alison Pendle due to her lack of talent, but rather because Joey knew if he made her desperate enough to regain control of Alice, he could make his horrifying pitch to Susie a little easier to swallow. What was Joey's pitch? Well, in her audio log from Chapter 4, after Susie was replaced by Alison as actress for Alice, we hear her comment on a private meeting Joey has asked her to attend. Now he wants to meet again tomorrow? Says he has an opportunity for me? I'll hear him out. And then, in Chapter 5, we find out that the contents of this private meeting was Joey pitching the idea of becoming a living version of Alice Angel to Susie. I know how much this part means to you, Susie. Alice means a lot to me, too. I'm putting together a small project, and I want you to be a part of it. I want you to bring Alice to life once again. Now we know from the coffins dotted around the studio that workers who later became rebirthed via the ink machine had first met a sticky end. One of these coffins belongs to Susie, and so it seems she was so unhinged and desperate to voice her character once again that she even gave up her human life willingly. In order to become part of the twisted experiment, Joey was cooking up. Finally, her dream of becoming one with Alice would become a reality. But unfortunately, we know Susie wasn't reborn perfectly, as she makes mention of this in Chapter 3. We also know that this betrayal by Joey Drew turned Susie Campbell from unhinged and desperate to psychotic and with a split personality. We can hear both her good and bad side inhabit Alice's mind within Chapter 3, a sort of Two-Face style scenario. 
However, by the chapter's end, Susie's adorable human side has finally been suppressed by the part of her corrupted by Joey's deception, and this pushes her to do anything she can in her futile search for perfection. I just wanted what was promised to me. I just wanted to be beautiful. Of course, ironically, Susie met her end by the hand, or should I say sword, of the actress who replaced her at the studio, Alison Pendle, and a mysterious Boris clone known only as Tom. These characters are, I believe, Alison Pendle and Thomas Connor. Of course we had theorised this many months ago, but what's interesting here is that Chapter 5 added a few twists to the backstory of these characters. These twists take their story in a sad and morbid direction. Let me explain. During the opening of Bendy Chapter 5, Alison remarks to Henry that she has met this stern-looking Boris clone within the studio, and she has no idea who he is, but that he seems to respond to the name Tom. Why do you call him Tom? He just seems to respond to it. This, coupled with our knowledge of Thomas Connor's past work history as a maintenance worker and inventor of sorts, hints towards this being his true identity. Also, we find a Boris plushie in the toolbox next to Thomas Connor's Chapter 5 audio recording, and there are numerous hints towards workers from the Gent Company eventually becoming the Boris clones we see around the studio. I've touched on this in previous theories, so I won't go any deeper with the idea here. But this isn't the only evidence we have of Thomas Connor being this particular Boris clone. There are two more pieces that link this character to his original human form. The first is quite simple. During the end credits, we see Thomas Connor's name appear below an image of Tom Boris. However, the final piece of evidence connects him to Alison in a profound way. Upon travelling back to the beginning of the story, after Henry defeats Demon Bendy, he finds himself in Joey Drew's apartment. If we look to the post-it board in this room, we can see a great deal of useful information. Included here is a letter from Alison Pendle to Joey Drew. The letter is warmly written and seems to be a reply to Joey's original letter. In this letter, we can clearly see Alison seems to have married Thomas Connor, which means they may have hit it off while working together at the studio all those years ago. And not only that, she does not refer to him as Thomas, but rather as Tom. This suggests Alison is indeed the version of Alice we see in Chapter 5, despite her memory not serving her well enough to remember. But more than that, it also explains the connection these two creations have for one another. They share an affection not seen by any other character in the game. Despite their memory being erased as a byproduct of their inky rebirth within this cartoon world, Alison Pendle and Thomas Connor still share a connection, one that brings them together again and allows them to form a bond. When looking at the wall in the Chapter 5 safe house, we can see pictures drawn by Alison, pictures that may reveal their home back in reality. It seems from these pictures they lived on a farm, as well as memories of how the two reunited inside this cartoon dimension. So it seems Joey lured these two ex-workers back after keeping in touch with them, using deceptive and seemingly harmless back and forth via mail. Why would he want to re-involve workers that left the studio many years ago after its initial closure? Well, Joey seems to be trying to achieve greatness. He even has the ink machine stashed secretly away in his home. So he may have been looking for suitable candidates to use in his experiments now they have been perfected. He may also have had the double motive here of hoping to cover up any loose ends, making anyone involved in the original experiments of the studio disappear, and Thomas Connor was directly involved in the creation and original tests of the ink machine, so he would be someone who could cause Joey problems down the road. It seems this ink machine may have even been a design of Tom in the first place, as Alison mentions he is angry about one of his inventions going missing. However, this could also relate to the looking glass device. This is the final piece of the puzzle, the piece that links Thomas Connor to Susie Campbell. As Tom may have been one of the key creators of the ink machine, this, to some extent, means he was responsible for Susie's eventual fate. He was also present for Susie's second death at the hands of his wife and fellow voice actress Alison Pendle. This tragic tale connects all three characters together. 
Susie was promised to become a real-life version of Alice Angel, but the process was a failure, and so she eternally seeks perfection. Alison Pendle and Thomas Connor left the studio and married, but were lured back and killed before being reborn via the ink machine in Joey's house, and waking up with no real memories within the cartoon world Joey created. A world he would eventually send Henry inside to, and these characters are now forever trapped to repeat the same sad story within this living cartoon. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you're interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.